Hello everyone, uh, Jim Davis from Fluke Networks here. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of making sure that our cabling is ready to support power over Ethernet. We've seen some powerful demonstrations explaining the great efficiencies that we can expect from using power over Ethernet within our buildings. Now, we're going to test, I'm sorry, it's a little bit scary looking, this piece of cable, but it's a very special piece of cable. If we'll look at this test result, this is clearly a passing test result. Now, it does have this one funny value here in resistance, a letter I. The reason it has a letter I is the field testing specification doesn't require us to test resistance values. We test the resistance, and here are the resistive values of each one of the pairs, but there's no limit because the standard doesn't require us to test it. Now, to support power over Ethernet, it's very important that our cable has good resistance values. We know from Ohm's law that the more resistance we have the cable, the more force we have to have, the more voltage we have to have to get the power that we're looking for out of the cable. So what we've done at Fluke Networks is to create an extended test. Let me just edit this test that I have set up here. And rather than doing a basic TIA test, I'm going to push more and TIA. And this is just a Category 5E cable, just Category 5E. This could support <laughs> 5 gigabits Ethernet you'll see that we have the choice of the basic permanent link or a pair of extended tests, including this extended plus PoE test. Now, in order for PoE to work properly, let me just push test here and get this running, we need a good resistance value and we need a good value for resistance unbalance. Resistance is going to be, uh, imagine this is a twisted pair, the loop resistance is the sum of the resistance of one leg compared with the resistance of the other leg, and the resistance on balance is the difference between the resistive values of the two legs of the pair. Suffice to say that it's important to have the right resistance on each leg and a similar resistance on each leg of the pair in order to support power over Ethernet. Now this is the same cable, and you'll notice now it, uh, it's failing. <laughs> that is bad. It's past all the regular parameters, signal and noise, uh, insertion loss, return loss next, but now resistance has this big red X. Well, what we've done is we've taken the values from the IEEE standards for what's required to support power over Ethernet. That would be 21 ohms of resistance. And we still have those same resistance values around 25 ohms. Now, while this cable is only about 50 meters long, it has too much resistance to properly support power over Ethernet. We can also see the other tests that we have included here. Here is our resistance on balance and our pair-to-pair on balance. If we're running 90 watts of 802.3 BT PoE, we want to make sure that all four pairs have similar loop resistance values. All right, we have seen here the importance of including that plus PoE, those extended tests, to make sure, well, a couple things it'll make sure. Your cable is ready to support power over Ethernet. It'll also check and make sure you don't have any contact resistance faults in your termination. Again, I'm Jim Davis with Fluke Networks, and thank you for watching today.